Most of the country watched with, I think, a great deal of interest um, right before the new year um, when we unfortunately had a train derailment in Castleton, North Dakota. What was unique about this train derailment was that it, the, the train that derailed subsequently derailed another train and resulted in a fairly large explosion which uh, uh, set shockwaves, I, I think, again, through the rest of the country as we started to address the issue of how do we maintain safety on the rails. And so we've been having a lot of discussions about what's the appropriate level of regulation. We have been having a lot of discussions about tank cars. Um, the U.S. Department of Transportation has been meeting with the railroad industry as well as the oil and gas industry trying to assure that whatever decisions are made enhance the safety. But I want to talk about something that's not about government regulation and it's not about kind of long-term strategies except to the point that it is about the heroics and the importance of first responders. And so I rise today to honor the heroics of Jeff Anderson, an engineer in training for Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad, whose bravery following the recent train derailment near Castleton prevented the dangerous explosions from the crash from spreading even further. For many of us in the Senate, the Castleton derailment has trained our focus on our efforts to improve safety for the rail shipment of crude oil. From increased tracks ins tracked inspections to updated tanker car standards to the consideration of new routing options for crude shipments, all angles for improving the safety of crude rail shipments are being considered. What we should not overlook in our efforts, however, is the importance of skillful and well-trained railmen on the lines. Railmen like Jeff Anderson are the backbone of that industry. And when one goes above and beyond the call of duty to prevent a disaster from spreading, they deserve to be recognized. On December 30th, a grain car carrying soybeans to the Pacific Northwest derailed near Castleton, North Dakota. An axle broke on the car near the middle of the train, forcing the car off the rails and onto the tracks of the adjacent line carrying trains in the opposite direction. Conductor Bruce Anderson and road foreman of engineers Paul Douglas radioed the emergency to the oncoming train on the opposite track, but there was insufficient time to slow down that train headed their way. In the brief moments following the derailment, an eastbound train carrying crude oil collided with a soybean car lying over the tracks, and that eastbound train exploded. Following the crash, Jeff and the entire crew of the westbound grain train sprang into action. Immediately following the derailment, conductor Bruce Anderson went back and pulled approximately 50 cars away from the fire. Recognizing the fire would soon spread to the remaining cars, Jeff worked with Assistant Fire Chief Adrian Kiefer to hatch a plan to couple back onto the remaining oil cars and hook, unhook the tanker cars and pull them to safety. Jeff a former civilian firefighter for the Grand Forks Air Force Base, borrowed two radios and fire protection gear from the Castleton Fire Department. His engineer and trainer, Tom Crooks, jumped into, uh, Cooks jumped into the rear engine of the train to reverse the locomotive towards the fire and connected the train to the tanker cars in danger of exploding. Jeff, armed in fire protection gear, walked towards the fire to conduct, uh, connect the train to the cars. He then walked even closer to the fire to pull the pin on the closest tanker car within a safe distance, getting 25 more cars away from the fire. Now remember, these are cars filled with crude oil. Once the pin is pulled, Jeff radios to Tom to pull the cars away. Because of Jeff's heroics, the danger from the dis, uh, derailment were minimized and the explosions were isolated to the tanker cars adjacent to the derailment. Had it not been for Jeff, this da disaster would have been much worse. I'd like to take this time to thank not only Jeff Anderson, but all those involved in the response, including engineer Tom Cooks, conductor Bruce Anderson, road foreman of engineers Paul Douglas, Castleton Fire Chief Tim McLean, and Castleton Assistant Fire Chief Adrian Kiefer for their presence of mind and their decisive action following the crash to minimize the danger of this derailment. And I rise with some um, awareness of what firemen do. 
Um, as the Attorney General for the State of North Dakota, I had the pleasure of also being responsible for the Fire Marshal's Office. Um, as, uh, as somebody in charge of the Fire Marshal's Office, I spent a great deal of time traveling across North Dakota, visiting not only with full-time firemen, but the wonderful volunteer fire offices that we have all across North Dakota. Um, I have a special spot in my heart for firemen. My dad was uh, chief of the fire department in Manador, North Dakota for years and years and um, uh, took that effort quite seriously, took the training quite seriously. And as we move forward in this discussion of guaranteeing the safety of crude moving on the rails, I would ask this body to consider a third prong, not beyond beyond simply looking at routing decisions and prevention of derailment, and then in the unfortunate incidents, containment of the consequences of derailment. I ask everyone to consider the importance of training, the importance of doing everything that we can to provide the uh, equipment and to provide the training and the resources to our first responders. Anyone who doubts the commitment of those first responders to put their life in, uh, in harm's way need only look to the 9-11 responders and realize if you've worked with firemen, they all knew when they walked into that building that their chances of returning were virtually non-existent. But yet they walked into that building in an effort that we can only shake our head at the heroics of that effort. And you take a look at the heroics of Jeff Anderson and his colleagues in, in uh, doing everything that they could to promote public safety and to guarantee public safety. Um, let's respond with appropriate public policy and appropriate training and appropriate resources for our first responders. Madam President, I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum.